Welcome to our broadcast from the Church of the Resurrection in Crosby, Texas. Today's message is brought to you by Father Rusty Elliser, Senior Pastor of the Church. Before we begin, invite your family and friends to gather around the screen as we watch and hear the sermon from God's servant. And now as we join the congregation in the name of the church, we pray you will open your mind, your ears, and your heart to receive the word of God. So we're doing something a little bit different Uh, last week and this week. Usually I would talk to you about the lessons from the day and we'll get back to that um, on the next Sunday. But I ask you all to be here to make a special effort to be here last Sunday and this Sunday. And look at you. You are here. Some others are not. You will be able to scold them in the days to come. Um, But they'll be watching this video. And so we welcome we welcome you that way. But last week um, we looked at the story that we tell as the church and um, I submitted to you that we can remember that story pretty well if we remember four names. Who can remember them in order? I'll give you a hint. The first one is God. The second one? The third one? And the fourth one? Very good. That's the way that the story works. Um, And so this week I'd like for us, that's the story that we celebrate. This week we'll look at the life that we live together as the church. And as I said, we've done this probably every few years. Sometimes what I'm about to do this morning gets stretched out over four Sundays. But I'm going to try to do it all on one Sunday so that it will help us hopefully to to remember it. And I think it will be helpful. We've talked about these themes before, as I said, but... Uh, Several weeks ago, I saw a church that had the same ideas as we had had, had, but they gave their people some really short, simple things to do. So they didn't just give them ideas, but they said, these are the ideas. This is what we're going to do together as a church. And I thought, now that's helpful to have something, not that you want a checklist for life, but something like that uh, that you can use. And what that is called is a rule. That church had developed a rule. The tradition of the rule the rule of life, comes out of religious orders who specified guidelines for how they chose to live out their lives in community. So maybe it was a monastery or something like that. This was their rule. This was how they lived. One writer says, a rule of life is an intentional pattern of spiritual disciplines that provide structure and direction for growth in holiness. A rule establishes a rhythm for life which is helpful for being formed by the Spirit. And so a rule helps us to be intentional in our life together with God. Because I don't know about you, but for me there are certain days when you wake up, you say, I just don't feel like doing this. But a rule reminds us, but this is what we do. For us at Church of the Resurrection, this is what we're going to do. So even though I don't feel like it, I'm going to go ahead and do it. And so I've talked with several people about this, but today I want to propose a rule for the church, a rule for church of the resurrection. Now this is not going to define your whole Christian life. It's not going to be everything that you do, but I hope it will serve as a baseline or a starting point so that we'll probably do more than this, but we won't do less. Um, A lot of you are doing these things already. For you, this will just kind of be a reminder. Um, The older I get, the more I want to keep things simple and short. The more I want to try to get life boiled down to, you know, some some simple things to do. So these are the four things that I propose for us as a congregation. All right, here they are. Go to church. Say your prayers. Stay connected. And be ready to do good. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about those things. Maybe it will be helpful for you to repeat them. Go to church. Say your prayers. Stay connected connected. and be ready to do good. good. Okay, let's talk about each one of these. First of all, go to church. And of course, the big idea here is the idea of worship. The Bible describes us as a royal priesthood. You know, I'm not the priest and you are just the people. We are together the priesthood of God. And a priesthood does what? They worship. They serve God. A holy nation and a royal priesthood. Now, you've heard, I've heard countless times those who say, well, yeah, I'm a Christian, but I don't go to church. 
I'm not going to spend a long time talking about that. Why? Because you're all in church. You know, you don't yell at people for not being at church when they're here. But I would say that by definition, a Christian is a worshiper. There's no difference. And the place where you worship God almost always is the church. So I'm going to give you the short thing, go to church, and then under each of these, there'll be one thing to do, or under one of them, there's two things to do. But, so what do you do? I propose that our rule is we go to church every Sunday, that you make a commitment to do that. At Church of the Resurrection, we go to church every Sunday. We'll say, well, sometimes I'm sick. If you're sick, you can't go to church. You under we understand that. Sometimes you're somewhere else, right? What if I want to slip off to the deer lease now and then? Or what if we have a house at the beach or a house in the mountains? You know, what, what, what do we do? What I'm about to say might surprise you. The first thing I would say to you, all of you, as families are living alone, take your vacations and enjoy them. Go. Take your time off. Enjoy your time off. Now, sometimes we do have to ask, how often can I or my family be away from the church and still be part of the church and still be healthy spiritually, right? Those are questions you have to ask as a family and we have to ask as individuals. But even if you decide that you'll be away for some time, you still have some options. You can still keep the rule. And so if you have a house in the mountains or the beach or wherever and you say, you know what, I'm just going to be there two out of the four Sundays a month, then there are two options. I would suggest you choose one of them. Number one is you can find a church there. Some of you might know this, but there are other Christians in the world besides just Church of the Resurrection. I mean, there are Christians in, you know, far off lands like Louisiana and, you know, <laughs> the church is there too. So if you're going to be somewhere for a long time, you just might need to look around and say, you know what, we're, when we're here, this is where we're going to go to church. Or the other thing that you can always do you have a prayer book. You can go wherever you are. If you're at the Deer Lease or wherever, you can open up your book and say morning prayer as a family or say evening prayer as a family. Make the commitment, I encourage you to, that you will go to church every Sunday, whatever, you know, even if you can't get to the church. Now, if this was a whole sermon under worship, we would talk about other things we do as worshipers, like live a holy life, tithe, if you want to come to morning prayer at the church or evening prayer when we have it, attend church on other holy days, but go to church. Go to church every Sunday. That's number one. The second one is, see how fast that was? We'll be done in no time. The second thing is, say your prayers. Now here we're looking at the idea, the big word of formation. And we could have really put this one first. And a lot of these things overlap, and that's fine to have them overlap. But God has redeemed us in Christ. He is in the process of renewing us by His Spirit, of forming us into the image of His Son. Now, when we say that, that doesn't mean that God is making you into a first century Jewish Messiah, like Jesus was, right? That was who Jesus was. That's not who you are. God is renewing you into the person he created you to be. The person you really are in Christ. And this is good for me and all of us to be reminded of. God is not trying to make you into the next Billy Graham. God is not trying to make you into the next Mother Teresa. God is transforming you into you. Like the little sign that said, be yourself. Everybody else is already taken, right? Now, sin gets us so confused, so tangled up, have so many layers of junk and bad thinking and all the rest. The result is we don't even know who we are. We don't. But God does. And God will chip away the junk, help us to lay aside those bad layers. Sometimes he will burn away the dross and bring us back down into ourselves to be the people that we are called to be in Christ. He will help you become the real you that you were made to be. Okay, so there's a little bit of talk. So what do you do? Okay, say your prayers. At the very least, you're going to say the office 
every day. Now, most of you know what the word office means for us. Office comes from the Latin word for duty or service. So as Anglicans and other traditional Christians, we talk about the daily office. And the daily office involves the services of morning prayer and evening prayer. Maybe some others, but those. So I would propose to you that you will say at least one form of those, morning prayer or evening prayer, every day. Now that's going to include a psalm or some portion of a psalm, a scripture reading, and the Lord's Prayer. Probably other prayers, but no less than those three things. You say, I don't know where to start. I'm so glad you asked. A good place to start if you're not doing any of this at all is on page 67 of the Book of Common Prayer. If we had more time, I would turn, well, some of you are turning already, but you can if you want. That's where you have really short versions of the daily offices, okay? So just to be able to tell you this, this week at my desk, I opened up to that little short form of family prayer, morning prayer, and I set my stopwatch and I pushed go. And I said the whole thing out loud and I was done in less than two minutes. And I wasn't talking fast. So if you say, I don't have time, that's two minutes. Now you're gonna get beyond two minutes, but that's a place to start. Now you say, well, but this Book of Common Prayer is all so confusing, I don't want to learn how to use it. Well, number one, yes you do. Number two, there's an app for that. And there is a free app that will bring those readings right to your phone, right to your iPad, wherever it is, and you'll be able to see that every day. Every day, brethren, we're going to say our prayers. With your family, by yourself, however it works out. And I welcome you to do what somebody did a few weeks ago. Come by and see me in my office and say, look, can you show me where to find the readings, how to say morning prayer, evening prayer, whatever? I would love to sit down with you and do that. Because see, those are answers that I know. There's so much stuff I don't know. Like in Sunday school today and people ask me questions. And I go, I don't know. I know these answers. I know how the book works. And so I'm happy to sit down and show you how to do that. Now, um, what are other things that form us? By the way, the app's free if I didn't mention that. If this was a whole sermon, what are other things that form us into the people of God? First of all, what you're doing right now, worship. We would talk about obedience, keeping God's commandments. We would talk about silence, taking time to be quiet with God. We would talk about, and this gets called a lot of different things, but we'll call it Christian friendship. Guys, you're, you're not going to get very far by yourself. From time to time, you have to sit down with a Christian friend and open your heart to her, to him. Say, so, you know what? This is what's going on. I find myself thinking this. I find myself feeling this. I'm happy about this. I'm not so happy about that. You will be surprised at how beneficial and freeing it is when you are known by somebody else who doesn't condemn you for it. In fact, nine times out of ten, they're going to say, you know what? I felt the same way. You know, you need Christian friendship. We all do. So... Go to church, say your prayers, okay? What it means, go to church every Sunday, say the office every day. The next idea, stay connected. It's not my favorite way to put it. Maybe we'll find a better way, but th that gets the idea of cross. And here we're dealing with the big idea of community. Our catechism says this, talking about the communion of saints in the creed. What does the word communion mean? It says communion means being one with someone in union and unity. For Christians, it refers to the unity of the three persons within the one being of God, to our union with God through our union with Christ, and to our unity with one another in Christ. How do you participate in the communion of the saints? I live as a member of the communion of saints through faith in Jesus Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit by gathering to worship God with my fellow Christians, by praying for and encouraging one another, and by coming to one another's aid in times of trouble, sickness, or grief. So stay connected. Now under this category, we're going to have two things that I hope we'll all commit to do. Here's number one. Number one is you connect with at least one member of the church every week. Now, what might that look like? It might look like when the service is over today, you say, hey, so-and-so, 
Good to see you. Glad you're here. How are things going? Okay, you've done it. You checked that box off for the week. Hopefully not, but that's at least one thing. What else might it look like during the week? You get together for coffee, or you text somebody, or call somebody. Hey, just checking in, see how things are going, right? You're staying connected. And if you're staying connected, that keeps us from going, man, it's been three months and I haven't talked to anybody at the church. Nobody's calling me. But it's going to be your job to call. And if we're all initiating, then we'll all learn to stay connected. So that's the first thing we're going to do, I hope. The second thing that we're going to do to be connected with the church is to be connected and involved by serving some role in the life of the church. The scriptures describe the church as a body. In our bodies, we have fingers, eyes, ears. All the parts or members of our body contribute to the whole body. And that's what we're called to do as the body of Christ. Now, I wanted to have it for you this morning, but I didn't get it done. But in the weeks to come, I want to put out a list of every service opportunity we can think of at Church of the Resurrection so that you can just choose them to your heart's content. There are things like the altar guild, the vestry, children's church, acolytes, making sure there's toilet paper in the bathroom, taking meals when somebody's sick, uh, doing maintenance on the building, playground, whatever. Right? There are a ton of opportunities. Listen, you need the church, and the church needs you. The church needs you. You have gifts. You can do things that everybody else cannot do. Go to church, say your prayers, stay connected. The final one, be ready to do good. And here we're dealing with the big idea of mission. Right, so we're a priesthood, we worship. We're members of the body, we serve. And we are <clears throat> ambassadors of the king. And God sends us out into the world. So what do you do? Now this is the least specific one, but I think this little phrase from St. Paul to Titus is helpful, where he says, remind the people to be ready to do good. In a few weeks, we're going to start using the other communion service in the prayer book. And in that service, the post-communion prayer says this, we pray that God will assist us with his grace that we may do all the good works that he has prepared for us to walk in. There are good works out there this week that God has waiting for you. They're prepared for you to do them. We want to go out into the world and be ready to do good. You say, what's that going to look like? I don't know. None of us knows this week what that's going to look like. It could take hundreds of different expressions. What might it look like? It might look like this. You take time to listen to somebody. Or... Some kind of works of mercy and kindness, right? You're at the grocery store, the person in front of you is checking out and there's about, you know, five items left and the checker keeps going and the, the, the guy says, no, no, just stop, stop. What do you mean? I, I can't pay for those. And you say, what? Go ahead, I'll pay for them. I can pay for the rest of those things, yeah. You need that beer. No, whatever. It is. <laughs> you help change a flat tire. You know, you just, you, you see the opportunity and you do it. It might take the form of justice. You stand up for somebody who's being bullied or being oppressed. You pray for your friend or neighbor or family member who doesn't worship God. You tell other people about Jesus and the kingdom of God. They say, why do you put that last on the list? That should be first on the list, right? Well, it, in some ways should be first on the list, but usually you don't get to do that until you've done all the other stuff. You don't get to talk to anybody until you've proven to them that you will listen to them. Right? They don't want to hear about your God and his goodness until you've shown them his goodness, however you choose to do that. OK, so that's it. That's simple. But I think if we will do these things, it'll help us immensely as a church and as Christians. Go to church, say your prayers, stay connected, be ready to do good. I thought about asking you to make a commitment this morning, but I want to give you a few weeks to think about it. Um, she's not in here. There's a certain lady of the church that I talked to this morning that I've been discussing these things with. And she says, yeah, I think it sounds good. I said, are you going to do it? She goes, well, I'm good for about four out of five. I'm not sure about praying every day, but, you know, I'm, I'm working on that lady. Um, 
I'm going to try to remind you of these things every Sunday at the end of the service. I'm not going to say go to church because why? You're already at church. But as you go out, I'll try to remind you to uh, say your prayers, stay connected and be ready to do good. Probably sometime soon we'll have a nifty little card worked up that you'll be able to take home. I don't know who might help me with that, Viv. Um, but even besides just cards, now this is something that some of you can do. I, I'm not gifted like this. But what might be better than a card is for one of y'all to sit down and design a really cool thing that would go on your phone's home screen. So when you pick it up, you remember, oh, there, I need to, I need to go to church, say my prayers. Um, what was the other one? Oh, yeah, stay connected and be ready to do good, right? You see it on your phone, you go, yeah, I'm going to do those things today. But as we as a church and as Christians, are formed into the image of Christ, the sons and daughters of God, we become like Him. This is where I close, right? He is the one true worshiper that has offered the one great response of worship to God. He's the high priest. And so in Him and through Him and with Him, we become worshipers. He is the servant who knelt at the feet of his friends and washed their feet. His spirit transforms us into servants who think not only of ourselves, but of others and of how we can help the church. He is the one whom the Father sent into the world. And now Christ empowers us by the spirit and sends us out into the world as his ambassadors to do good and to announce the kingdom of God. You think about that this week. The king sends you to work there, to that neighborhood, to that wherever it is. You're there in the name of the king to see what good there is to do and to do it in his name. Amen. Thank you for watching the broadcast today. We hope you will visit the campus of the Church of the Resurrection and take advantage of the many ministries available to you and your family. Until next week, may God richly bless you and keep you.